Hello, I'm Tim Barnwell, and I'd like to welcome you to the face of Appalachia. I love old country stores and think I've photographed every one I've come across for the past 40 years. Something about the old wood structures and the fading signs just speaks to me. The stores served as centerpieces to their communities and are reminders of the past. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the important role the country store played in the rural, isolated communities of Appalachia. I'll share images I've made of stores over the years and the folks that ran them. Unfortunately, most of these have closed, but a great one that's still open is Penland & Sons on Main Street in Marshall, North Carolina. We'll visit them and talk with the third generation owners that keep the doors open today. Behind me is the old Burleson & Sons store in the small community of Plumtree, population less than 700, in Avery County, North Carolina. Built in the early 1890s, it served the community in the late 1800s and early 1900s. There used to be a bigger building adjoining the original one that served as an expansion, making one of the largest stores from the 1800s I've seen. The store was built by Charles Burleson, who was born in 1844 and died in 1929. In addition to running the store, he was in the mica business and was the first postmaster of Plumtree. His sons Henry and Frank took over the store operation from him and ran it for many years, and his descendants still own the property today. So let's take a closer look at the country stores of Appalachia. Country stores have served local communities throughout Appalachia for hundreds of years, bringing much-needed products into areas where transportation and access to the outside world was limited. Stores were as simple as the next room in someone's farmhouse or a small freestanding building on their farm to large frame buildings built at major crossroads. Early on when people traveled on foot or horseback, stores were found every few miles along dirt roads. Many folks might only make it to a larger town once or twice a year to buy clothing or staples such as coffee, salt, and sugar that they could not produce on the farm, so local stores were essential. These small stores carried a wide range of everyday items from food and snacks to soft drinks, tobacco products, medicines, kerosene, and coal. Larger stores would offer clothing, shoes, bolts of fabric, hardware items, and tools. Many of the stores extended credit to their customers, who were neighbors they knew by name and reputation. They kept a ledger where people brought items on credit and paid at the end of the growing season when they sold their crops. This was a valuable service for farmers who had little cash and mainly bartered. As people began to own cars and roads improved, folks could travel farther to shop and the country stores began to fade. Many became convenience stores, selling tobacco products, drinks, snacks, and beer where permitted. Larger general stores had to compete with chain stores whose corporate buying power allowed them to undercut family-owned businesses, so many had to close their doors. We're fortunate to have some of the old store buildings still standing, but with no one to maintain them, more of those disappear every year. The true country store, once an essential part of the community, has now all but disappeared. Hey, we're here on Main Street in Marshall, North Carolina at Penland & Sons, a neat old department store that run by the third generation of the family. Sister Georgette Shelton and Susan Rector operate the store today. Let's go in and take a look around. I'm Susan Rector. Um, I'm the uh, daughter of uh, George Penland and Barbara Penland. Uh, my sister and I, Georgette, uh, have the store. We're the third generation. Um, our grandfather acquired the business in the early 50s, and um, he passed away in 1966. And so from that point, um, our dad and Uncle Joe ran the business. Good. So, uh, when did your mother get involved? Because I guess I'd never met your dad. I've just uh, met your mother. Okay. Um, Mama got involved 
Daddy passed away in 2002, and then Uncle Joe passed away in 2004. So um, at that point, she, um, she used to have the beauty salon next door. And um, at that point, she had done that for roughly 45 years. And once Uncle Joe passed away, she closed her business down to come and do the, st the store full time. Now you both had careers uh, before you started kind of running the store after your mother passed. So what did you do? Um, well, I actually, I worked with mom in the beauty salon for 11 years. And then um, I went to work at the Register Deeds office over in the courthouse across the street. Um, worked for generally the Register Deeds at that time for 11 years. And then she retired. And then I uh, ran for for the office and um, won and actually was the Register Deeds for 16 years. I uh, retired from that office after a total of 27 years. And um, yeah, so after I retired, I came here to the store to help Georgette. She retired um, probably a year and a half maybe before I did and, and came to help Mama in the store. Tell me kind of <clears throat> what the range of products that you sell in the store and what you what your inventory is. Okay, well, we, we carry lots of Carhartt, um, mostly men's Carhartt. We don't carry quite as much women's inventory we do, as we do the men's. And um, we carry red wing boots, um, Irish setter boots, um, we carry a lot of uh, local artist things that we sell on consignment, uh, jams and jellies and soaps and different crafts, woodworking, uh, yeah, just different kinds of things. So I know you're open, I think you said six days a week, so what hours are your store? We're open um, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and from 9 till 1, sometimes later on Saturdays. Yeah, can people find information about you on the web? They can They can find out um, on our Facebook page. It's um, Penland and Sons Department Store. Yeah, we usually post, um, if the hours change or anything, we usually post it there. Notice all the items along the top shelf up there. Were they just collected over the years? They were. Daddy collected a lot of the stuff that's on top of the shelves. And um, then there were just, you know, there's some pieces that uh, people just bring and they just want to put on top of the shelf, you know, for us to show. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have any favorite items? Uh, I guess the deer is the, one, the oldest and the most favorite probably of all of them. Yeah. Penland & Sons has been a fixture on Main Street and Marshall since the 1950s. The town sits on a small slice of land between the French Broad River and the steep hills that rise above Main Street. Marshall, the county seat of Madison County, was a thriving town, vibrant through the 1940s and 50s, but was cut off when the bypass was built around 1960, diverting traffic that once traveled down Main Street. Shopping centers and grocery stores were built on the new road, and like many small towns, Marshall languished for years. Today the town is seeing a revitalization as new businesses move in and younger folks buy property in the area and run craft businesses, restaurants, and coffee shops. At Penland's, Sister Susan and Georgette keep the doors open today, welcoming customers, many of whom are neighbors and longtime friends, to their store. Their family has provided a valuable service and resource for the folks of Madison County since the 1950s. Be sure to stop in and visit them the next time you're in the area. I first photographed Burleson's store in 1992. At the time, both the original store from the 1890s and the newer white building attached were still standing. On a visit to the store in 2001, I met Hal Plemons, who was tearing down the newer building for the owners. He thought that section had been built in the 1930s, but had been sitting unused for many years. Hal gave me a handful of old store invoices from the 1890s he found lying on the floor, along with a ledger book that detailed the credit people had with the store. These beautiful ornate forms show hardware purchases from Woodruff & Company in Knoxville, Tennessee, shoes from Elk & Shoe Company in Elkin, North Carolina, bananas from Frank Hester Produce in New York, boots from Sells Schwab & Company in Chicago, and general merchandise from the Baltimore Bergen House in Maryland. 
I was especially fascinated by the advertising signs painted on the original building promoting graham crackers, Zuzu ginger snaps, and Unita biscuits, products of the National Biscuit Company, which we know today as Nabisco. There is also an ad for the W.O. Wolf Monument Shop in Asheville, North Carolina, which produced tombstones and monuments from the late 1800s to the early 1900s. W.O. Wolf was the father of renowned author Thomas Wolf, who wrote Look Homeward Angel, which was required reading when I was in high school. Following are photographs I made over the years of other stores with great signs. Johnny Coates' store in Madison County, North Carolina, was another one whose signs got my attention. I first photographed it in 1982, before the family moved the store across the road to where it sits today with other farm buildings. I recently sat down with his children, Dale Coates and Yvonne Cantrell, and they shared memories about their father's store. So your dad ran a store for a while here? Mm -hmm. When we were little. We were real little. Yeah. I don't. I remember being able to just tiptoe and get a piece of bubble gum out of the off one of the shelves but uh yeah it was here several years and uh, mom and dad both run it yeah they uh they'd be they'd be off working and dad had a bell if somebody come and needed in the store then he'd leave the field and come and uh, mom always hated that her and my aunt doll uh, out uh, uh, because they'd be left working, Daddy'd be down here talking, you know. <laughs> At the store. But uh, but it was uh, it's pretty good. I was uh, I was a young and I don't know I was probably five, four or five, and uh, he had a bottle opener on the counter where I could reach it. Of course I couldn't open it, but I get a drink out of the cooler, and some man or somebody come through that could o uh, operate that. <laughs> and I'd reach him that drink, and they'd open it and reach it back. And I'd drunk all Daddy's profit, I guess, about <laughs> it. But I never did like milk because we had the milk cows, and I never did drink milk. And so I've drunk soft drinks all my life, and I'm a 70-year-old this past March. And uh, But Dad seen what I was doing, so he took the opener, and he put it high <laughs> Well, the same man that opened it down here <laughs> could, open it could open it up there, and after a while, he closed up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's my fault or not, but. <laughs> so what all kind of things did they sell in the store? Gosh. Right. They sold everything, didn't they? They sold thread and medicine and and just, uh, you know, groceries. Yeah, a kerosene. He even had a kerosene. Yeah, it's it's still in there. It's the, still in the, the store. Time they'd, bring her a little kerosene can and uh, he'd spin that, you know, and get it to pump. He'd pump it and then they'd charge, you know, however how much. Because a lot of people, they didn't have vehicles, you know, and and uh, they'd walk, I mean, they'd walk here and get whatever they was needing, you know. They had tobacco products and, I mean, just anything that really, every day that you'd need. Yeah. And, uh, 
And I always wondered if I was the reason Dad closed up. <laughs> <laughs> the country store was an integral part of Appalachian Mountain communities for generations, providing such essentials as food, clothing, farm tools, and medicines. The few buildings still standing today serve as reminders of the role they played in the remote communities they served and are symbols of the past. The country store was not only a source of essential goods, but was a social gathering place where people got an update about a sick neighbor or news of the outside world. They could pick up their mail, swap stories, hear gossip, and learn about upcoming community events. In times past, people bought locally because, in many cases, they had to walk to the store nearest them but it had the benefit of supporting neighborhood, family-owned shops who invested in and kept money circulating in their own communities. Today we have more choices about where we shop so we can decide what businesses we want to support. For many years, I went every week to my local East Asheville Hardware. Even though it was a relatively small store compared to the big box ones, rarely did I go that I did not find what I was looking for. Ultimately, they could not compete with larger chain home and garden centers and close their doors. Buying local supports the folks in our own communities and keeps our downtowns and main streets strong. So while the traditional country store is all but gone, we can still find shops where we can buy our goods and keep in touch with what's going on in our own community. If you share my interest in the people and places I call home, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to learn more about this way of life. On this channel, I hope to continue to honor the people, vibrant culture, and strong traditions of Appalachia.